25, and I'm going to start reading in verse 17. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5, starting at verse 17. I'm not going to have you all stand today because my reading is a little, a little lengthy. Um, so bear with me. Acts chapter 5, starting at verse 17. And it reads, Then the high priest and all his associates who were members of the party of the Sadducees were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Go stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people the full message of his of this new life. At daybreak, they entered the temple courts as they had been told and began to teach the people. Go down to verse 27. Having brought the apostles, they made them appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said, yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus from the dead, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior that he might give repentance and forgiveness of sins to Israel. We are witnesses of these things and so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this they were furious and wanted to put them to death. But a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law who was honored by all the people stood up in the Sanhedrin and ordered that the men be put outside for a little while. Then he addressed them. Men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do to these men. Some time ago, Thutis appeared claiming to be somebody, and about 400 men rallied to him. He was killed, and all his followers were dispersed, and it all came to nothing. After him came Judas the Galilean, appeared in the days of the census and led a band of people in revolt. He too was killed, and all his followers were scattered. Therefore, in, a, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone. Let them go. For if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. Lord, I pray now for these next few moments that you speak through me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in our sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. I can't really tell y'all what's going on in this house today, but I will say this. I know Pastor Allison was right on point, and I know Brother Brownlee was right on point. And, and Chantel, I don't want you to feel like you on Front Street. Just feel like you are uh, the sacrificial lamb for everybody today. Because as I was preparing to come to church today, God said, this is intercessory Sunday. Amen. Now, what that means is, and, and I was saying, you know, we haven't had an altar call because of time, because things, how things have been going. People have not been able to pray for one another. And God said, you need to make sure that people get their, their hands laid upon them today. So I got a certain time that I'm going to stop preaching and we're going to pray. But I have to I have to kind of uh, MC what has gone on so far. So we'll understand that this is just not happenstance that Chantel. We didn't know. I didn't know Chantel was going to be here. And, and so she's here. And so she's taking the heat for some of us who also are going through, who also that Satan wants to steal, kill and destroy, who's also trying to take your mind, who's also trying to put stuff in front of you to make you think that this walk is not worth it or your life is not worth it. All these different enemy type attacks that are coming at us, we have to understand. As Anissa was testifying, I thought about something um, Bianca Kelly. Uh, told me about what fear is, is, is false evidence appearing real. And so that's, so, so that's some good stuff that you think about. I know we all saw the guy trying to walk across that room and we could see all those things coming 
and, and it's just an illusion. And isn't that amazing how we can be so scared of an illusion? But the Word of God teaches us in a, in, a, in, in a very strategic way that we have nothing to fear because Satan can't touch us because we have a great big old God <laughs> living, living on the inside of us. And he's on our team and he's going to protect us. And so we have to understand, we have to really take that to heart. And I was, and, and, and I was, I was going to preach something else today. And so I talked to Camille and Camille called me. She had an accident. She didn't testify about it last week, but her car got totaled and she was at the car dealership and she told me to pray that she get approved. I said, I got you. Y'all know when y'all say you want me to pray, I got you. And I started praying. She texted me back and said, I got denied. I'm like, oh. <laughs> blah, 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 But God immediately said, hey, this is, this is my job to do what I need to do for my people. Sometimes we get it so confused thinking it's us. And because we prayed and it didn't happen the way we thought it should happen. That, 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 that we, we're less than. That's what Satan would want us to believe, that our faith has, has, has I guess, lackened because we prayed for something, it didn't happen. She texted me later on and said she got a car that she didn't really, what, it, what I read was she really didn't want it, but she glad she got something to drive. And I say to you, Camille, despise not the days of small beginnings. If you're faithful over something that's small, he'll give you something that's bigger. But you just got to understand where you're at at that particular time so you can so you can get the bigger thing that's on the way. You know, sometimes we want to drive something before we're ready. Ah, y'all don't hear me preaching. That ain't what the, that's not the, what the message is. So here in Acts chapter five, it's funny how how this text goes, because it begins. Chapter five begins with Ananias and Sapphira lying about selling well, let's go to the end of chapter four. It talks about having all these possessions and all these possessions. The church brought them together so nobody in the church would be at lack. So they would give they would bring all this stuff to the table. So if somebody needed something, they would help them. Amen. And so then you go to the very next chapter, Ananias and Sapphira, who's bringing some money to the church for the people. They lie about it. So they lie about it. And then, of course, they fall dead. So then they tell that story. Then that story jumps to the apostles sitting on Solomon's porch at the temple. They're healing people. They're healing people from all over the place. They're casting out demons and the people are coming. They're just trying to put the people even in Peter's shadow and they're getting healed. And then the powers that be get mad. Now can y'all really help me understand that? It kind of reminds me of America, how we, how, we, um, how we build our income off of people's hardship. That's a whole nother message, but again, money is made by our inability to rehabilitate. We don't want people rehabilitated. We want people sick. So Crystal says, why am I, why am I at St. Joe's and why am I so frustrated? You're so frustrated because you want kids healed, but they want kids to stay sick so you can keep getting money. So, 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 so you're bumping in to a system that's going against your values and principles. So if you thought it was new, it's in the Bible. Because here, the apostles are trying to heal people, and they are healing people, and they are giving them, because Jesus has just died on the cross, and now his apostles are going and preaching the word, and now their people are getting healed, people are coming to contact with Christ, but the powers that be said, we can't let this happen, so we're going to throw them in jail. So they throw them in jail, and that's where I read it. They throw them in jail, and then an the angel comes and releases them. And here's the first part of this text that I want to preach about. They get put out of jail and they say the, the, the angel tells them, go and preach the word like I told you. What am I saying? I'm saying, and that's why I don't want Chantel to be the sacrificial lamb, but she's here because anybody could be. Pastor A could have went and hugged anybody in this church and told them to come up there and sit by her. Because they got stuff going on. And so as, as, as I was reading this and as I'm looking at this service, God, I believe God is trying to help Proverbs understand if you get put in jail for serving me. Now, I'm not talking about a physical jail. I'm talking about a mental, emotional, financial, whatever kind of trap you're trying to. If you get in trouble for my sake, understand I'm going to send an angel to break those chains. And you need to go back and do what I told you to do. 
All y'all don't hear me. Anissa said, God keep having me do stuff that's seemingly impossible. But you got to be obedient. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He will not give you a vision to do without giving provision to make it happen. And so because he's going to give us some provision, we have to keep on moving. No matter what it looks like, sounds like, smells like, tastes like, you got to keep moving forward. Now these guys got the nerve to put the apostles in jail. Then the angel comes and gets them out. And they go back to the place that they were preaching and they preaching again. Now they go back to the powers that be and say, you know, them men that you had locked up, they out of jail now and they still preaching and teaching and doing what God told them to do. There has to be some tenacity on our part not to give up when things don't look right. We have to have the wherewithal to keep pushing, even when it makes people angry. Don't y'all know that when we tell people about Christ, it's going to have, we're going to have some conflict. People are not just going to readily say, hey, I accept Christ and I want him to be the Lord of my life. Because if you need an example, look at yourself. How hard was it for us to come to Christ? Then take it another step. How hard for us to be obedient to Christ when he gives us some specific direction? It's easy to do what we like to do when it's simple. But when we have to give somebody a word that rubs them the wrong way, that's not fun. But if God is telling us to do it, these men were willing to die for what they believed in. So now here they come again. Didn't we tell y'all not to preach? And I'm not going to go back there and read it, but I'm going to paraphrase. They say we're not going to be people pleasers. We're not going to preach just because we're not going to stop preaching just because you want us to stop preaching. We got to preach because we got a higher order of instruction coming from. And the consequence is greater from that one than it is from you. And so we're going to keep on preaching. Do whatever you got to do. But Gamaliel, Gamaliel, G-A-M-A, Gamaliel, I know, that's one of them tongue twisters for me. He helps them understand. Take them out the room. Let me give y'all some wise counsel. He said, now, when all these other people tried to do something, the movement fell off because it was man led. But if you if God is in it, you cannot stop it. If God is in it, you can't stop it. Why is that important? And why is that an important word for us? We need to understand that God has ordained us to do something. Nobody can stop it. Nobody can stop it. We have to not get frustrated. I took some kids to, to, I took some kids to, to lunch. I'm doing a, man, a boys to men program. Mrs. Greggs got some third graders and the third grade teacher got some kids that's a little rough around the edges. So I took them to lunch Friday. Y'all, I was so frustrated. They was, I told, I told my kid, I felt like that parent who take their kids to the restaurant and just put their head down. They running around the restaurant, they yelling and screaming. And, and so, and, and so, and so, and so, Miss Greg, I had Sarad, Eric, DJ, um, Jacob, it was enough, and Gideon. Woo! Y'all. They was running around and yelling and screaming. And I was so frustrated because y'all know, usually, I lock it down. I told McKay, I said, I haven't done this in a while. I said, my little words didn't mean absolutely nothing. And I said, I ain't taking them nowhere ever again. I'm done. I'm done. She said, oh, Daryl, they was just happy. They was just excited. Way in the car, they wrestling, they yelling, and they screaming. I'm like... I just I was just so frustrated. But after got after I got through talking to Makeda, I, I start to think. God said, you can't do this on your own. Let me tell y'all what I believe that means. That means me in all the skills that I have and all the training and all the tools that I have, I still can't help them get where they need to get without his help. And I have to have an understanding that I just can't give up 
after the first time. I got to keep pushing with these third graders past. I'm like, my goodness. And I showed her. I said, I see what Miss Greg means. I knew what she meant, but I really see they got to deal with this all day in class. Jesus. But guess what? I'm not getting ready to give up. And when they turn around, it's not going to be for my glory because I'm so good. It's because God put an idea in our hearts and now we have to bring it to fruition. So now I got to go back and I got to reload and I got to do it different and I got to take them out again. But I'm going to be ready. We're going to have things a little different. Next, we're going to do a little bit more prepping and a little bit more talking and a little bit more instructions. And I'm going to be a little more rested. Oh, y'all don't hear me preaching. I'm preaching right now because we have to understand when God has appointed us to do something, trouble is going to always be around to thwart it. He's trying to tear it up. He's trying to tear up what you all are trying to do. All of us. I preached last week about completing. When God rested, he rested when God's will was fulfilled. And so we can't rest with an unfinished job. Too many times we're leaving the job without the job being completed. And sometimes we are okay with half doing something. Can I tell y'all, if we're building God's kingdom, we can't half do it. We can't have Chantel walking around in church. She has no idea. She may not have any idea what that means. Well, I'm going to give you a quick Bible lesson. Joshua had to tear down the walls of Jericho, and they walked around the walls. They walked around the walls every day for seven days. On the seventh day, they walked around seven times. Am I right, you biblical scholars? They did it because they were getting ready to celebrate. They were walking around. They were claiming the victory. You walking around this church, Makeda, she a walker. She like doing that. She walking for herself, too. Oh, y'all didn't hear that. Y'all didn't catch that? Y'all caught that? Sometimes we have to be on the coattail of somebody else so they don't see our stuff, but they think I'm helping this one. But we walking together. Oh, y'all. We got to be able to be vulnerable like that. And, and, and Makeda got on me last Sunday because I said, y'all remember when I started preaching, I said, how many sinners was in the house? And, and nobody raised their hand. She said, well, you, said, you, you made the environment so people may not have wanted to raise their hand. And I, and I thought about that and I beat myself up for a little bit. But then I said, well, sometimes we got to make folks uncomfortable. And sometimes people got to be honest with themselves. Because when, cause, when, when Chantel had to come up here, I had, a little, I had that little... You know how you do when you don't want somebody to be shamed. But I said, well, guess what? If she can't come to the house That's right. That's right. and nobody have enough discernment to, to see a need and address it, Amen. we not the church. I don't care how much we sing good and praise and worship was off the chain today. It was awesome. And we all we can do is sing and we can preach and give an offering and go home and nobody got their needs met and nobody felt something in their spirit. Nobody felt something for somebody else. We're not being the church. The church is about community. The church is about helping one another. That's what we're doing. I'm so glad Chael got the running thing. I hope he used it. We got to keep making him use it. Yeah. All that stuff. That's, that's church. What y'all do at church? Oh, we had somebody come up and they walked around the church and somebody got a, somebody, one of the kids want to be a football player. They told them, y'all, that's, 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 that's real church. That's ministry. Talking about evangelizing, talking about being attractive. Sometimes we get the wrong thing mixed up. I bet those guys was preaching so hard and, and they had so much power that, that Peter's shadow. Can, can, can somebody be healed by your shadow? Yet I believe we can have power like that in 2018. I believe that the Spirit of God can reside in us so strong and we can be so in touch with him that people can touch our shadow. Why don't you practice walking into an environment and see if the environment changes because of your Amen. presence? That's, it. That's what I'm talking about. That's real change. And my time, so I got to stop. Y'all, I've never done this ever in my life, but I got to stop preaching right now because we got to pray. Pastor, Amen. come up here. Pastors, come on. 
Makeda, come up here. Mr. Greg, come up here. Amen. Woo, I know you know that, Mr. Greg. You're getting ready to use this praying talent now. Amen. Come on, Lord, Pastor. We're going to do this a little different. Usually we let them come to us. We going today we're going to them. God put, and listen, Mr. Greg, it's no time to be scared of what somebody going to think or say about a white man coming to pray for him. Shh, y'all quit playing. Cuz once we get once we get once we get to a place to know that prayer is prayer and that somebody loves God that they had a power to that he may show him something that he may not show anybody else. Boy, y'all know something real good. Y'all ready? You got who you going to first? You got who you going to? Pastor, you got who you going to? Greg, you got who you going to? Allison, you know who you going to? You got who you going to? You know who you going to? You got, five, so you got some oil on you? Let's go. Listen, don't nobody go to Tisha because Tisha is mine. Linda is mine. Mine, right there. Let's go.